thing to ourselves, some with deep meaning, and some like the tinkling of little Chinese glass bells. With all purposes, these songs do their part to offset the thousand and one tragedies, both great and small. Perhaps we employ these songs for a definite reason, Perhaps the subconscious is trying to lift us above the shambles and remnants of sorrow by this mechanism of healing. But when the songs are no more, when they fade and die, we are prey to ugly harmonies that bear no relationship to song. They play across our minds like the discordant cacophony of pounding hammers upon metal Pounding, pounding, pounding day and night in the brain. And so, in just a moment, to our story starring Miss Miriam Hopkins. <laughs> I don't know her. Didn't you ever meet her? No. You've seen her in musical shows, haven't you? No. Please, I, I've got to get on the train uh, now. Just one more, Mr. Carter. You had no idea your husband, David, was uh, interested in Gloria, huh? No. You thought he still loved you. Yes, I thought so. If it will thrill your readers, put it in. Oh, please, uh... Here, yeah, I, I got you, ma'am. Can't you let the lady go into the car? Can't you see she's faint? Oh, move. The train conductor, hold her up. Boy, what a shot. Thanks. I, I'm all right now. Now, wait a second, Mrs. Carter. Just one more. Do you still love David? Well, you ought to keep your reporters away from these trains. You haven't answered, Mrs. Carter. Do you still love your husband? I loved what I thought was my husband, not the one ahead in the baggage car. All aboard! And now, goodbye. <laughs>
Hello, Mrs. Carter. No, thank you. Anything I can do? No, thank you. Dora. What? Hello, Jim. Oh, I, I didn't expect to see you. I thought you might be on this train. I'm up ahead. I was walking through to see if I could find you. May I, uh, may I sit down, Laura? You know how terribly sorry I am, don't you? Yes, I know. Thank you, Jim. Were you going up to New London anyway? Well, I wired Mother this morning that I'd come home for the weekend. I never thought I'd be going up like this. I thought a lot of days, so... Yes. It seems a great many people did. Would you rather I didn't talk about it? No, I suppose I'll have to get used to it. People talking, I mean. You've suffered horribly, I... haven't you? You stood up with us when we were married, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Ten years ago this month, was it? Yes. Ten years ago. We never saw a great deal of each other in New York, but... It wasn't intentional. Pete and I seemed to want to be just together. At least I thought so. But in the summers in New London, it was different. We saw you there. We've made our plans to come up as usual next month. Well, we won't be there. David loved you. Did he? You know that. You know that he did. I thought so. But I was wrong. Oh, it's difficult for you now, the shock of the accident, and well, I suppose you didn't know anything about her. I never knew such a person existed until the police phoned me. The next day I learned plenty from her story in the papers, and the Salt sisters, and the reporters at the feet. Poor Laura. Well, I've always read about dumb wives, and I've laughed and felt so superior. I never knew I was just a dumb wife myself. You weren't dumb. You were decent and loyal. It didn't get me much, did it? I can't bear to hear you talk like that. It isn't like you, Laura. It is, now. But there must be some other side to the story. I I know David loved you. David was devoted when he was with me. I say that over and over. How could I have been so dumb? And then I say, how could I have been otherwise? There wasn't the slightest change in our relationship from the first eight years. Maybe there was some hope. Men are, men are different than women, Lord. Isn't that a pitiful excuse? We're all human, aren't we? Is there any reason why men should be less decent than women? I'm not trying to excuse him. I'm trying to understand. No matter what has happened, David was fundamentally a fine man. There must be more to this than, than you found out. If you could realize that he did love you, it would help now that he's gone, wouldn't it? Oh, no, it wouldn't. Do you think it matters to me whether a love so worthless and so weak do you think it matters now whether that love was sincere or not? Yes, I think it does. You worshipped him. No. I worshipped what I thought he was. Well, so what? This trip to New London ends it all forever. Oh, you mustn't become hard like this. You've always been gentle and kind and so full of fun. <laughs> My fun evidently wasn't fun enough for him. Laura, can't you try to think of the beautiful things that you had together? No, I, I've forgotten them. They're wiped out forever. I don't think so, dear. You don't know. I know how happy you both were when, when baby came. Oh, Jim, don't, please. You can't forget things like that, Laura. And what happened? I know. You lost her. I thought I'd die when that happened. David put his own misery in the background so as to help you through your grief. They say things are meant to be. Maybe my baby was never meant to live through the disgrace of a father. David wasn't selfish, Laura. He needed you then. But as soon as you were strong enough, he insisted on your trip to Bermuda. You remember? Yes, I remember everything. While you were away down there, David was so tragic, so desperately alone. Well, he got over it, didn't he? He met her. We were all so happy when you came back and you started to smile and be your old self again. Can't you realize now how all of us, all our new London crowd, are loving you now, wanting to help and still loving David, too? I know. I know how kind you all would be, but I want to break clean from everything. Won't you come over to the house, Laura? I've flown Mother before I left New York. She wants you to come. Thank her for me, but I can't. I can't bear sympathy. Are you planning on remaining for a while? No, I want to get rid of the summer house. I'm going back to New York tonight. Friends help, Laura. No. There would be too many memories. I don't want to pass the school we attended. 
I don't want to go by the church where we were married. I don't want ever to see our house again. Look at the boats on the water where we sailed. I don't want to meet the people we played with or were brought up with. I want just one thing. What? I've planned it all out. I shall leave you here, never come back. I don't intend to go back to our apartment. I'll go to a hotel. I'm going to wipe out every connection and every thought of the past ten years. Poor, foolish Laura. No one can wipe out ten years of their life. I can. You think so, but you'll become bitter and cold and hard. You'll build a wall around your pride and your anger, around your hurt and your grief. At least they'll be hidden. No, they won't. A wall of that sort is like a hothouse. It makes the worthless plants grow and thrive and until they, well, they choke out all the sweet, natural, tender ones. Maybe that's what I want. It'll be for my good. Maybe a woman should be hard for self-protection. You can never be that. Can't you try to remember the good things, the happy things? Give them all your attention. Neglect this one unfortunate happening. As time goes on, you'll find that even the memory of it is gone. He lied to me. Even the day he was killed. He left a note on my dresser that morning. In it, he wrote that he loved me. That I was all that mattered. It may have been true. I think it was. Then he went out with her and was killed in a drunken auto crash. Fine love. He was sober when he wrote you the note. Why do you defend him, Jim? You wanted to marry me once yourself. Yes, I did, but you chose David. I suffered then, Laura, but I didn't let it lick me. And I gained two good friends. You and David. Pardon, Mrs. Carter. Yes. We're coming into New London. Oh, are we? Oh, thank you. Memory drives a thorn into Laura's mind as she thinks about the ugly death of her husband. One pounding thought, that of her husband, another hammer stroke, the other woman in his life. For him to have shared his life with this woman is as bitter as a cup of hemlock and as poisonous. The song is ended, but the rhythm goes on, pounding into a deep obsession. In just a moment, we return to our story. Thoughtful, the train and all. I couldn't. No, no, no. I'm coming with you. You can't be alone. Not now. 
Oh, uh, driver, take us to the nearest florist shop, will you? I, uh, I don't want any flowers, Jim. David loved them. We both did, remember? You two were pretty crazy over that rose garden, Laura. Do you mind if I get some for him? I haven't any right to say no. You want it, do it. Stop, driver. Here's the florist. Oh, Jim. Mm -hmm. Look, in the window. They're beautiful, aren't they? White roses. I'm going in. I want to get them for him. Myself. alone on his grave. No. They're all he would have wanted, ever. Yes. Jim. What is it, Laura? Would you... Uh, would you break off one of the roses for me? Of course. Thank you. Now I... I can take something back to I wish I could persuade you to stay. No, and you needn't come in with me. I'll be all right. Goodbye. And thank you. Goodbye, Laura. Seat 11. Here you are. Thank you. Will you lower the shade, please? The car's about empty. Wouldn't you like to sit on the other side? You won't get the afternoon sun over there. Very well, I will. Perhaps you'd like this pillow. Yes, please. I'm so tired. Oh, conductor, here, here's my ticket. I don't want to be disturbed. Are you getting off at 125th or Grand Central? Grand Central. I'll call you when it's time. Thank you. Laura. Laura, dear. Oh. Oh, I was dreaming again. Laura. White rose, put it in my hair. And you gave me white roses today. When you gave me those, I knew there was a chance to try to make you understand. I had to get through then, and I did. Every anniversary, you sent me white roses. Because every anniversary, I loved you more. That's why each year the roses were more in number. I know. I used to ask you why, and even laugh because of so many. But you only kissed me and never told me why. You brought one white rose away with you, didn't you, Laura? I didn't want to. I, I just couldn't help it. I wanted to go on hating you. No, dear, please. No matter what I did to you, please go on being my girl. The girl who said yes in the rose garden. Listen, Gloria, you loved her, David. You loved her. Oh, no, I never loved her. She said so. She told the reporters two years of this. Two years of trying to get out of a sordid mess. And two years of getting in deeper. But I never loved her. Remember the time you went to Bermuda? Yes. Two years ago. I missed you, Laura. I went to a cocktail party. I drank too much. I met her. And you fell in love with her? No. She liked me. I was flattered. But I was your wife. I, I loved you. Then she asked me to dine at her place. I was lonely and, and again flattered. I went. But I came back in two weeks. It was too late then. I was in a mess. And loved her? Infatuated for a while. I grew to hate her. 
Why didn't you break off? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I, I couldn't. I was ashamed and afraid. Did she love you, Daisy? No. I had money, position. She wanted that. Oh, if you'd told me, I would have understood. I wish I had. It went on and things got worse. She threatened a suit. I sent her foolish letters when we were home that summer two years ago. I couldn't buy them back. She wanted everything. I, I left you the note last Tuesday morning. I found it after you'd gone to the office. It was true, Laura. It said, I love you, dear. I've always loved you. No one has ever meant anything to me but you. Your foolish husband, David. Your foolish husband, David. I thought it was more of your sweet nonsense. I laughed all day whenever I thought of it. Till the police phoned you that I was killed. Yes. And then she told the reporters everything. I thought we'd both go. I never knew that would happen. You mean... I mean I ran the car over that embankment deliberately. She was going on with a suit unless I... I'd ask you for a divorce. David! Oh, David! Can you forgive me, Laura? Oh, my poor darling. I was wrong. I should have faced it all and come to you with the truth. I just... By you, David. I would have. I know that. I wanted you, no matter what you'd done. And you'll always have me, dear, if you'll believe in my love. I will. I will. I knew today when I passed that floor shop, our shop, darling, where we used to go. I knew then I did love you. Dear Laura. There were white roses in the window. Jim was with me. We went in and bought all he had for you. Oh, my dear. I must go now, Laura. Oh, don't leave me. I won't, dear. To let me come back. But how? How can I? My love and forgiveness, everything else that happened will vanish. And Laura. Yes, dear. Be kind to Jim. He talked to me so wisely, David. I tried to fight, but what he said went deeper than he knew. He was our friend. He is our friend, and he loves you. I don't want you to go on alone. Oh, that could There's be. only love where I am. And this love knows no selfishness. This love knows only the good, those we love. Goodbye for a while, my darling. We're almost in, lady. Lady, we're almost into New York. Oh, oh, thank you. Sleeping mighty sound. Sleeping? Sleeping? Oh, no, I wasn't sleeping. Maybe not. Anyway, you look awful refreshed and rested. Oh, here's your flower. Must have dropped it here in the aisle. Oh, thank you. Funny thing about that white rose. All this way you've traveled, and it still looks nice and fresh. They're beautiful flowers. I have a garden full of them back home. Hey, that's mighty nice. I bet you sure got somebody taking care of them while you're gone. While I'm gone? Sure. Pretty things like that can't just be left. I expect that's the first place you'll look when you get back home. At your garden. You want it just the same as when you left it. Oh, I... I hadn't thought of that. Hello. Is this the long-distance operator? Oh, well, uh, this is the party that's been calling New London, Connecticut. I wanted to talk to Mr. Jim Randall, 26 Elm Street. I, I didn't have the number. You have a call? Thank you. Hello? Hello, Jim. Hello. Jim, this is Laura. Oh, yes, dear. Where are you? Well, I'm in New York. Laura, dear, is there anything wrong? No, no, Jim. It's just that, that I want you to do something for me. Well, of course. Jim, will you get in touch with Foley, my gardener? Yes, I believe I can locate him. Oh, but you must, Jim, you must. Tell him that I want him to go back to, out to the house. I want him to be sure everything's all right with the flower garden. Now, what is it, Laura? Well, Are I... you coming home? Jim, I... I don't know. But all this about the flower garden, I don't understand. Jim, don't you see? Somebody has to take care of the garden. Of course, dear, only... Because, Jim... Jim, if I ever did come back, the first place I'd look to see if it was... Just the same as when I left it. And a dream changes everything. The first notes of a girl.
glad new song rise in Laura's heart as she faces life now with courage. Gone forever are the tympanic pounding, the discords that pushed her to this obsession. In just a moment, I'll be back with a preview of next week's story. Transcribed by C.P. McGregor in Hollywood.